Strongest eruption yet. Parker, get your mask and lungs. I want water samples. It's too soon. It doesn't look like it's safe. Oh, nonsense. These eruptions rarely last more than a minute or two. It's vital we get the samples immediately. You'll never make a scientist, Kara. You're too cautious. I know. I can't help being a woman. Well, I am grateful for small favors. Oh. Good, we're all set. Would you uh, help me out the escape hatch, please? a great deal more information your request is impossible i expected you to say that admiral nelson and i understand it but we're not talking about a stranger we're talking about dr anthony sterling i know that i admired tony when he worked here with us and i admire him now but do you have any idea of the number of requests we have every day for the facilities of seaview of course i do so does he but this is a very special case they all are then you're just not interested I'm just not available. Well, I don't know what I'm going to tell him. Just give him my sincere regrets. Are you sure you won't reconsider? He needs help. He needs your help. I wish I could give it. Excuse me a moment. That's what is it? Admiral, a call for you on the video phone via Telstar, a Dr. Sterling. He must be calling from his deep sea lab. I put him on. Yes, sir. Admiral, how are you? Fine. You look well, Tony. Well, sometimes appearances are deceiving. Is something wrong? Ask him. Admiral, was that Kara? Is she with you? She's right here. She's just given me a fine sales pitch. Then you are coming here. I can't. I, I just explained to Miss Sloan. But you've got to. I'm onto the most exciting discovery of the decade. 
Admiral, let me ask you a question. How much would you say has been spent trying to dig a hole to pierce the Earth's mantle so that we could study the core? Oh, hundreds of millions, and you, you know it's of vital interest to us. Well, I've already accomplished it. <coughs> you what? Oh, I didn't dig it, of course, but I've discovered it. A natural fissure in the sea bottom, and it extends right down to the core. Are you certain of this? There's, there's no mistake. None at all. This fissure leads directly to the Earth's core. This changes everything. I had no idea you wanted anything that big. Uh, who's working with you? Well, I did have two assistants. One of them was killed by an unfortunate accident. I sent the other, Miss Sloan, to plead with you. So I'm quite alone here now, and I need your help. You've got it. I'll prepare to get underway immediately. Thank you for calling. I'll keep you informed. Get me Captain Crane. Yes, sir. Why, Admiral, what happened to all those important previous commitments? Lee, alert all officers. I want to see if you prepared for immediate sailing. I don't care what you say, Chief. I got a good look at her. And all I've got to say is, oh, welcome aboard. You and the skipper both, Ski. Did you see him give her the eye? Yeah. Come on, come on, knock it off and play your hands. Anti-female. Listen, Buster, I dig a pretty chick just like the next guy, but on a ship, they're nowhere. Special attention, special quarters, special details for all hands. Uh, forget it. If you ask me, he's superstitious. What do you mean, superstitious? OK, then, when you play cards, why do you always wear that shirt? What are you talking about? What's this got to do with superstition? I wear it for luck. Come on, play your cards, will you? <laughs> and this is the crew's mess you were asking about. And this is the kitchen. That's right. Only we call it the galley. I don't see any cooks. Well, they're not due yet for another hour. Oh. Come on, I'll show you the lab. Right. How's the game going, Chief? Oh, fine, sir. Oh. oh, please. Just a minute, Captain. I did want to leave a message. Mm. Chief. Yes, ma'am? Could you ask the cook if he can serve me a salt-free diet? Salt-free? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Well, I hate to be a nuisance about it, but it is important to me. You'll see to it, won't you, Chief? Aye, aye, sir. Thank you. Mm. Now, let's see that lab. Fine. See what I mean? Salt-free. Gin. <laughs> Captain, I'm impressed. My particular field is chemistry, and I've never seen any finer equipment. The Admiral can take the bar for that. Oh, I might have guessed. Would you think it rude if I asked to be left alone here for a little while? I do have some work to do. Oh, not at all. See you at dinner? I wouldn't miss it.
Is he all right? He seemed well, particularly when I told him we were proceeding to his lab, submerged at top speed. How quickly can we get there? Now, with luck, uh, Thursday morning. Excuse me, Miss Long, you care for salt? No, thank you. I never use it. What's that position, Chip? Here's the latest fix from navigation. We're making good progress, uh, ship-wise. Touche. I never saw a woman like Kara Sloan. Nothing on her mind but business. Well, you can't win them all. Well, so far, Miss Sloan, all I know is that Dr. Sterling really believes he's tapped the Earth's core. Now, uh, is there any other data we can process? Everything I know is in those reports. The rest is up to Tony when we get there. Well, I guess I'll have to settle for that. At least it won't be long. Admiral, the captain would like you to come to the control room when you're free. Be right there. No, sir. I was standing by the window. I saw it. I only know what I saw with my own eyes. What is it? Suppose you tell the Admiral in your own words, Riley. Yes, sir. You see, Admiral, I was standing and watching the observation nose. I was looking out to the water when this far-out fish thing makes the scene. Well, what was it? You'll think I'm putting you on, sir, but it's for real. It was a sea monster, sir. <coughs> I see. Um, um, exactly what did this uh, sea monster look like? Well, sir, it was like way out. It was maybe 300 feet long. Go on. A long, thin body like like a snake. And a head. This is the part that'll bug you. With a head like a dragon and big, sharp teeth. <laughs> uh, anything from uh, sonar, radar? Negative. They are, Riley. You couldn't have seen anything, could you? Yes, sir. Only... Go on. Only I did, sir. As clear as I see you now. Well, that's all I'll say. We gave him a sobriety test. He's okay. And obviously he uh, believes what he said. Don't you, Riley? Yes, sir. I think we'll just send you along to sit bay and have the doc look him over. Captain, unidentified contact. Dead ahead. What do you read? Extremely large object. It's closing fast. All stop. All stop. Nothing. Sonar make contact. There's got to be something out there. You don't think that thing uh, Riley saw? Oh, Riley may have seen something, but it, uh, it certainly wasn't what he described. I don't get it. A lookout sees something without a sonar contact, and then we get sonar contact, and there's nothing out there. <laughs> well, there has to be some rational explanation. Sonar. Give me a reading. Unidentified object still dead ahead. And still closing fast.
rudder. Ten degree left rudder. All stop. All stop. He keeps coming on. We can't shake him. Find him. Prepare forward torpedo tubes for firing. Prepare forward torpedo tubes for firing. Forward torpedoes ready, sir. Firing order one, three, two, four. Very well, stand by. Lee, what is it? It shouldn't be a pig. Go back to your quarters. I can't. I want to know what's going on, please. All right, all right. Stand back. What? Well, look for yourself, sir. Scope's clear. Say, Kowalski? Everything checks out. We checked out the entire sonar and radar systems from antennas on down, and everything is ship shape. Very well. Secure the detail. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, Ski. Nothing. Nothing. Every instrument works perfectly. Maybe we need a mass eye examination. You may have a point there, Chip. You detest what you can't explain, don't you, Admiral? I detest is the wrong word. I, I worry about things I can't explain because those are the things that can hurt you. Well, there's a perfectly logical explanation for all of this if we can just find it. I'm sure there is, but what is it? An ordinarily competent seaman comes to me with some fantastic story about sea monsters. Totally unsupported. No radar, no sonar contact. But there was contact with the other sighting. And we all saw the giant squid. Yes, but nothing happened. I mean, nothing physically happened to the submarine. That's exactly what bothers me. That and the fact that the squid vanished without any trace. Admiral? Yes, Lee? Unidentified sonar contact. <laughs> right there. Well, here we go again. Now, I wanted you to see this for yourself. Am I blind, or is that a positive contact? That is a positive contact. But there's nothing out there. I took a look out the nose, nothing. I activated both the nose and the sail camera, still nothing. But look at that reading. I can't make out any of it. Let's have another look at the sail camera. Activate sail camera.
Captain, it's gone. It's there. Look at the monitor. No contact. But there's something wrong with sonar, obviously. It's just been checked out. It's working perfectly. No contact. It's almost as the... Secure sale, camera. Well, gentlemen, those are the facts. I can't explain them, but uh, if any of you have any ideas, I'd be glad to listen. Now, about all I can do is review the steps we've taken. Now, first of all, we've checked and rechecked all detection gear. There are no malfunctions. Chip, we've doubled the watch on sonar and radar and cut our forward speed to two-thirds. I've also ordered round-the-clock lookouts posted in the nose. But beyond that, well, frankly, I don't know what else we can do. Neither do I. Thank you. Admiral? feeling you're holding back on us. Oh, not, not uh, really, Lee. I have a theory, but uh, it's a little wild to talk about just yet. Let's wait a while. Riley? Keep a sharp eye on. Aye, aye, sir. What's the trouble? After what's happened, I hate to say this, but look at the scope. Blips, no question about it. There wasn't any question last time either. Keep a fix on it. Guess what? Sonar's got another contact. I can't ignore it. I just saw it in the scope myself. Remember the boy who cried wolf? We alert this crew one more time, and they'll all put in for sick leave. Admiral, this is Crane. Yes, Lee? I'm sorry. We need you again in the control room. More of same. Very well. Skipper, this is the bow lookout. We've spotted something. Bearing 010. It checks. Big as a house. Coming right toward us. Hard left rudder. Flank speed. You can't shake him. He's veering toward us at full speed. doors. Rick for collision. So, 
obviously, when fantastic creatures begin to appear and disappear in a matter of seconds, and the pattern repeats itself time after time. There's only one possible solution. They weren't there at all. But what about our sonar contacts? Machines don't have vivid imaginations. It's what men do, and we have to interpret what the machines tell us. In short, we're all victims of mass hallucinations. Oh, that's hard to buy. You find it easier to buy what we've just seen? No, of course not. Admiral, I've been listening to all this very carefully, and I think you're 100% right. You'll notice as we approach the area of the undersea lab, the hallucinations grow stronger and more frequent. You imply a connection. Yes, I do. I suggest you contact Dr. Sterling. He'll verify my theory. Sparks is the Admiral. Raise Dr. Sterling in the deep sea lab. I'll talk to him on the control room monitor. Aye, aye, sir. Admiral, I agree utterly with Kara. These hallucinations phenomena seem to occur frequently in this area. Is there any connection with that uh, earth fishing you discovered? Oh, definitely. That's one of the areas in which I need your help. We must determine what gases or radioactive emissions produce this result. How soon can you reach me? Well, sometime today, we should be in position to launch the uh, flying sub and get to your lab. Good. Are you all right, Tony? You look tired. Well, uh, a great deal has happened since you left. I'll uh, tell you everything when you get here. All right, but take care of yourself. Admiral, would you come alone on the flying sub? Don't bring anyone but Kara. All right, but I'd like to know more about this hallucination phenomenon. Well, there's nothing more to tell now. It increases as you approach the fissure. I can't talk any longer. I'll wait here for your arrival. Goodbye. I'm worried about him. He doesn't look well. All right, you'll be with him in a little while. Hallucinations? Oh. Now, you mean to say that we've all been seeing things? That's a scam, Chief. Right, Riley? Right. I got the scuttlebutt straight from sickbay. I don't care if he got it straight from the Admiral. Seeing things? Man, I haven't made that scene in my whole life. <laughs> oh, no? What about the time right after that three-day binge in San Diego? Oh, that was different. Nice work. Nice work. Oh, Stu, get the captain a cup of coffee. Now, I suppose by now you know all about the hallucination theory. Who? Us, Skipper? Chief, you were in charge of loading stores for this voyage, weren't you? Something wrong with them, sir? And that's what I'm trying to find out. Was there anything unusual about the food we put aboard? No, sir. Everything was SOP. How about the water? Have we desalinized any from this area? No, sir. Our water tanks were full, and when we shoved off, we haven't needed any. Why, sir? What's wrong? The theory is that the hallucinations are caused by some kind of um, gas or radiation from mm. these particular waters. <laughs> I don't buy that. This sub has a, what do they call that, a self-contained... Self-contained uh, environment. Right, sir. We could be floating in pure gin and it wouldn't affect us in here. Now, that's exactly why I had to question you about the stores, Chief. The only way we could be affected by a hallucinogen, and that is by a drug which makes us see things, would be right here aboard this ship. Well, it's nothing we brought aboard, sir. Okay, Chief. Thanks. Subs all checked out, so ready to launch whenever you are. Thanks, Chip. I put this on. Is this necessary? It has a built-in life jacket. If we're forced down in the flying sub, it'll keep you afloat until we can be picked up. Uh, here's a chart marking the position of Dr. Sterling's deep sea lab. Fine. <sighs> Something we should know before we go, Lee? Well, uh, I have to make this report. More sonar blips. More blips. What is it this time? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, sonar has hundreds of contacts. Large, moving objects on all sides. More hallucinations. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Any visual contact? No. 
Not that it matters if we can't believe our eyes. It's a curious situation when you can't trust your own senses. Maybe it's just as well you can't. Take a look out there. You're not gonna launch the flying seven now, are you? What does it matter what we see out there as long as it's a product of our own imaginations? Lady has a point, Lee. You see, all my training has been to react to what I see. It, uh, it isn't easy to ignore. But you've already seen things just as fantastic as what's out there. You even thought you were under attack and nothing happened. So are we just going to wait around because you refuse to admit that there's really nothing out there? We launch the sub. Admiral, I, I know they aren't there, but they're starting to move away. I'll keep in touch. You stay in this area. Good luck. Checklist complete. Ready for launch when you give the word. No visual contact with the big fish now. Pattern seems to be the same as all the other illusions. They seem to be all around us one minute, and the next there's no sign of them. It's not quite the same this time. Sonar still reports multiple contacts at a slightly greater range. Do you want to proceed with a launch? When you're dealing with hallucinations, you can hardly expect to find logic. No further visual contact. Negative. Proceed with the launch. Stand by to launch. Launch. in a matter of minutes, and we'll submerge and board the deep sea lab. Kowalski, stay alert. Real or not, I want to know whether those fish come back. Aye, aye, sir. Tony. Deep Sea Lab. Deep Sea Lab. This is the flying set. Admiral, look there. That's where the fisher is that Tony discovered. It erupts that way every so often, just like old faithful. Hang on.
Admiral Nelson. I caused the visions, and hallucinogen in your salt supply. But why? So that when you saw the real giant fish, you'd just accept them as another vision. Well, then I assume I was accurate all the time. But our minds, and a mass hallucination, misinterpreted our own instruments. Is that right? There is so much to explain. Naturally, it was necessary for me to swim out into those waters for hours at a time investigating the fissure. Apparently, there is some emission from the Earth's core that produces uncontrollable growth. How do you explain it? I can't. I haven't been able to isolate this strange emission. But you've seen what it has done to marine life, and now to me. Well, I'll do everything I can to help, of course, but first of all, I've got to try to seal up that fissure. I'm calling Seabill. No! You must not order your submarine to close off the fissure. Don't you understand? This is the discovery of an age. He was afraid that's what you'd do. That's why he sent me to get you without telling you too much detail. You did a fine job of that. Sorry. I'll help you try to reverse the growth process, but only after we've eliminated the cause. I won't let you do it. I'm sorry, Tony. Admiral, don't. Get away from there! Can't we get out of here? I think we'd better. All I had one third. All I had one third. That solid contacts directly off our bow. All right. Let's see how real they are. for collision. Keep 
trying. Any luck? No. We've lost all contact with the Admiral. Set a course for the deep sea lab. I just did. Skipper, sonar contact. How many this time? Just one. Either this equipment's broken or it's the biggest object we've ever spotted. Chip, alert all weapon systems. This time we're gonna have to fight. Yes, sir. chance of saving him. Admiral, will you get out of here, please? I'm going back to see you for help. But I'll be back. Systems ready for firing. Chip, take a look. Nothing could be that big. Silvio, you read me? This is Nelson. Come in. Fire two. Sparks, Sparks, I, I don't read you. If you hear me, pipe this to the ship.
Bring the reactors up, give them a full charge. Fast! Pick me up, I'm coming back aboard. obviously affected his mind as well as his body. What about Kara? Do you suppose her mind was affected too? Well, in a way, by something much more powerful than any hallucinogen. She was in love with Sterling. Well, we sealed up the Earth fissure. There won't be any more giants growing in these waters, real or imaginary. Lee, would you pass us off? You want to live dangerously? Uh, second thought. Forget it. <laughs> 